this is Peter's way of saying the time is near, the end is at hand. Get it right between your ears so the feet know how to walk in a world that does not know where they're headed. Be the one that's thinking clearly, loving faithfully, serving faithfully. In a world of lovelessness, thoughtlessness, and lawlessness, you are going to be thoughtful, full of the love of God, governed by the authority of God, serving them in this world through Christ. All right, welcome back. Wow, I cannot believe we have made such an amazing journey through the book of 1 Peter. In terms of numbers, there's going to be 13 sermons. We're on number 10, so we're almost through the book of 1 Peter. What a journey this has been. So much we have learned, and we're continuing this talk in this section of 1 Peter chapter 4, he really focuses on how you and I are to live out our faith as time draws near. As a matter of fact, the phrase that he opens up with is, the time is at hand. So you can hear him begin to wrap up his thoughts. Already as a writer, you can hear him speaking the importance of, hey, let's, let's, let's think straight, let's get this right. Because he literally says that, right? The time is at hand. Think sober-minded. So let's jump into this, okay? And before we really jump into it, I was just reminded, we have tried to visit a number of cities. We started out in New Mexico, and since being back in Florida, we've tried to hit a number of locations to film. And everywhere we go, we, we meet someone that we either have a word of prayer with, or they're engaging on what we're doing and, and inquiring, and the same just happened. Uh, so we're about ready to start, and Jeff is here uh, from Naples. And he comes out and he says, hey, are you guys filming a movie? And said, no, we're doing a Bible study. And he goes, oh, cool, are you doing the Sermon on the Mount? Because we're in Mount Dora. So we're in Mount Dora today and we're at One Flight Up Cafe. Thank you so much to the management and the staff for allowing us to take advantage of this beautiful location and scenery to do this Bible study. So here we are, Mount Dora. We're doing a sermon in Mount Dora, but not the Sermon on the Mount. How funny is that? Jeff, thank you for that. Praying for you as you head back um, to Naples. So here's where we are. We're in 1 Peter chapter 4, and he literally says, the time is near. So let me ask you a question. If Jesus Christ could come at any time, any, the Bible tells us that, if the end of all times is at hand, how should we live? Like, you and I need to continually think on a daily basis, like, the end is near. So every day when our feet hit the ground and our mind begins to engage, automatically that's how we think. We let our mind begin to determine how our feet walk, act, and behave. That, that sort of frames the worldview approach for that day and everything, all right? So but let, let's dissect this. Now, now you have to get this in your heart. Eternity is not something that's way out there. Eternity is just one step away. Like, you need to live with that foot action compounded, developed in your mind. In other words, with this knowledge, we need this in our mind so our feet will walk this way. In a day of so much information, we lack actual knowledge. And so Peter here is instructing us to have the appropriate knowledge, the knowledge of God in our mind, which directs our feet in a path on how we walk. If we're not careful, and you know this, I've said this a number of times, we take our information, our facts, at feed value. The news that we see on our social media feed, the ticker tape running across the bottom of the, the shows on television, that's our feed value. We don't live by feed value. We don't live with headline hysteria. As followers of Christ, we live with the knowledge of God in our minds. And this is exactly what Peter is driving us back to. He says, you and I are to live sober-minded. Now, go back and watch the message. I really developed that point of what it means to be sober-minded. It means to get things right between your ears. Remember, if we don't wake up and get right with God first thing in the morning, the rest of our day is just gonna be madness, right? The world wants to compete for that space between your ears so it can dictate how you will act. If you can have God in the center, sober-minded, if your thinking is clear, you, with the Word of God, will know how to appropriately respond. 
So I want you to get a pen, get a piece of paper. Um, we're going to show these verses as best we can um, when we in the video, right? Maybe even afterwards, maybe in the notes on on the section here. But take that, take a piece of paper and a pen. I want you to write these down. Here's your questions. Here are a few questions. How should I think? So if the Bible tells us to get it right between our ears, does it give me guidance on how to think? It absolutely does. Let me give you two verses. First of all, you need to look up Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Think on these things. Philippians 4, 8. And then just right across the page, like we're in 1 Peter 4, right across the page is 2 Peter chapter 1. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Using those verses, I want you to answer the question, how should I think? Here's another question. What do I even think on? What do I even think on? Proverbs 1.7 tells you and I to th have the knowledge of God. The, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Again, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. So what do I even think on? Okay, Proverbs 1.7, 2 Peter 3.18. What guides my thinking? Now, you're going to spend the most time here. Third question. What guides my thinking? Read and study and know Psalm 19. Short answer, the Word of God is what guides your thinking. But study Psalm 19 because it develops more for you and I how the Word of God develops our thinking. So three questions, right? How do I think or how should I think? What do I think on and what guides my thinking? We're going to give you those verses. Here's why that's important. In an age of thoughtlessness, we need to have the knowledge of God. Let me say that again. In an age of thoughtlessness, we need to have the knowledge of God. Because here's what we know. Our world is going to become thoughtless. Our world is going to become loveless and lawless. So now that Peter senses that and knows that, he already prepared us for the persecution that's coming. Now he's saying, listen. When it begins to happen and you're in that culture, you have to have a firm, sober, established way of thinking. In an age of thoughtlessness, lovelessness, and lawlessness, you need to know how to think. He practically tells us that. So more than just studying the Word of God, he now wants us to live out this Word that we study. Remember the Oreo... Did he lose it? Remember in our illustration of the Oreo cookie, we're downtown Mount Door, you have to put up with the street noise, right? We love it because the reason why we're here is to show um, doing the Christian life in the midst of busyness. That's why we're here, right? I hope you understand that. Okay, anyway, remember the Oreo cookie illustration? Uh, sec in, in the Bible, we know that uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is love. 1 Corinthians 14 is gifts. We call it the Oreo cookie of the Bible. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 13. What's in the middle is love. So we already talked about last week, what is the importance of love? We're talking also this week, why express love? And how do we express love? We do that with our giftedness. 1 Corinthians 12 is gifts. 1 Corinthians 14 is gifts. What binds them together is the love of Christ that we have. So when we have the love of God in our heart, we have the knowledge of God on our sides, guiding and guarding our mind, we are then able to employ our lifestyle through speaking and through serving. In a nutshell, our very purpose in life gives us a mission. We know that. And our business is to engage in His business. Remember that? Engage in business until I return. How do I do that? Well, first of all, you have to understand, at the moment of salvation, you were given everything you will need to live godly in Christ Jesus. At the moment of salvation, you were given everything, which means you were given spiritual gifts. You were given talents and abilities. You were given the spiritual giftedness to live out your faith, right? So many of us as Western culture we think life is about a job and an income, and then I'll serve God after that. No, your giftedness is your job, and your giftedness is expressed through the job that pays your bills. You don't approach your giftedness at the end of the day or after you've established an income. It is your mission. 
to serve God in this life through your giftedness. You may be a gospel plumber. You may be a gospel teacher. You may be a gospel doctor. You may be a gospel mom or a dad. What you do pays your bills, but who you are is a minister in Jesus Christ. We serve this world as aliens in a world of lovelessness, lawlessness, and thoughtlessness. Our guiding, our knowledge of God guides our thoughts, which helps us determine how to serve the giftedness we've been given to a world where no, they're not serving each other, they're not loving each other, and they're not thinking about each other, and they're certainly not thinking clearly. So how does he say you and I sort of flesh out our faith? First and foremost, before those feet hit the ground, you have to already have a time in your mind, in your heart, in your head where God has established. the knowledge, Pursue the knowledge of God daily. So as soon as those feet hit the ground, your mind is shaping and determining where your feet go based upon the giftedness you received at the moment of salvation. So as you're working, as you're serving, as you're living the Christian life, in everything that you're doing, you're serving this world through your giftedness. Our world doesn't know how to think like that. And when you and I live like that, it causes them to think, what am I missing? Remember last Sunday we asked, when was the last time somebody asked you about your faith? This is how we live as aliens, by speaking, by serving, with the knowledge of God in our heart, in our mind, in our head. So let me end with this. And I wanna go back and review the questions and the verses, but I wanna end with this. Remember the early church grew by serving, not by arguing. Think about that. The early church grew by serving, not by arguing. So here's a, here's a question as we end. Are you aware of your spiritual giftedness? Are you aware of how uniquely God has gifted and shaped you to serve Him by serving those around you to bring others to Christ? You say, no, I'm not. How do I find out about it? We're gonna give you a link, you should see it, a link embedded in this Bible study to a, web, to a website, it's on our website rather, a link also on our website to a free spiritual gifts test. It doesn't take very long takes a few minutes, you get the results, we get the results. And then you say, well, great, I have those results. What do I do with that? That's why you come to church. Because wherever you're serving, life groups, students, children, administration, volunteer, worship, right? Wherever you're serving, that department helps you understand your spiritual giftedness. Now watch this. Why is belonging to the local church so important? because it's in the local church that you get to practice your giftedness. It's in the local church, you get to practice your giftedness. So when you go out into the world, it's not like on the job training. You've already practiced it within the community of the local church. So when you, you're outside of the local church at your job, in your neighborhood, in your home, you're already prepared on how to live that out. So here's two questions, then I wanna go back and give you um, the study questions. Are you aware of your gifts? And if so, can you identify ways that you can serve God by serving others? All right, so let's wrap this up. Let me give you these questions and then we're done, okay? Here's what I want you to study. How should I think? If Paul is calling us, hey, the end is at hand, be sober-minded, how should I think? Philippians 4, 8. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Hopefully you're writing those down. Number two, what do I think on? Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Peter chapter 3, 18. What is it that I think on? And number three, what guides my thinking? This is a somewhat a, a lengthy study into Psalm 19. Okay, getting a hold of this. Getting that here directs the feet to live out there. This is Peter's way of saying the time is near, the end is at hand. Get it right between your ears so the feet know how to walk in a world that does not know where they're headed. Be the one that's thinking clearly, loving faithfully, serving faithfully in a world of lovelessness, thoughtlessness, and lawlessness. 
you are going to be full, full of the love of God, governed by the authority of God, serving them in this world through Christ. In a nutshell, that's what it means to be an alien. Wow, this one's a little deep. And I want you to use those verses and go a little deeper. This is how you and I approach the end times. Man, I love this study. I love what he's given us here in 1 Peter chapter 4. It bleeds over into 2 Peter. God bless you guys. As always, end in a time of prayer. Pray for each other, yes, but pray for your neighborhood, your job. Pray for God to identify ways for you to serve others. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of this. Share this video, study over this video. Our world needs this message, right? Our world needs what's contained. So in closing, when Jeff came out vacationing from Naples and I shared with him, he said, how appropriate to do a Bible study on that topic. Our world needs this. And so Jeff, thank you for sharing and being a part of that. I know you're not actually in the video. Hopefully you're back in Naples and you're watching this and we're praying for you as well. Hey, you guys have a great study, have a great week. We'll see you on Sunday, God bless. Mm -hmm.